Hello and welcome to the final episode of Country Fried. My name's Ryan Harmon and it looks like our time together has come to an end. Seems like only yesterday when we started this crazy idea. Originally the main point of this podcast miniseries, I guess you'd call it, was to accompany Ken Burns' country music. But we very quickly found out that we were filling a void that maybe we didn't know existed. But really we shouldn't be surprised. After all, Arkansas has always been big on music, particularly country music. I think that has a lot to do with what country music is and what it represents. It tells the story of common people, just like you and me. And that, along with these conversations we've had, seem to fit right in with what AETN has always done best. Storytelling. Each week, my goal was to paint a picture, if you will, of different eras and different styles of country music, while also uncovering some information you might not have known about some of your favorite country artists. This is one of the easiest things I have ever done. I got to spend some time talking to icons and legends about one big thing that we all have in common, our love of country music. And that brings me to what I've got for you today. You know, we've prided ourselves on bringing you the best country music conversations each week, but this week I want to start a country music conversation with you. And it's the same question I've asked almost everybody I've had on the show. What does country music mean to you? And while you're thinking about that, let's look back at how some of our guests have answered that question. Starting with the guy who kicked it all off, the only person to ever beat the devil in a fiddle contest, Charlie Daniels. Well, country music is what I cut my teeth on. Uh, Grand Ole Opry has been part of my life for as long as I can remember. I remember it's the first radio show I consciously know that I listened to. I know that I used to, and my family listened to it. It was part of our lives. It was part of culture in my part of the country. It was uh, the kind of thing that uh, out in the tobacco field on Monday morning, uh, so many, we all knew what song Webb Pierce sang tonight on Saturday night, you know. Uh, we all knew what uh, joke that Minnie Pearl had told or Rod Bassfield had told. And we knew, uh, you know, what, uh, we knew what was going on. We knew what they did. We knew the songs they sang, we felt like we knew them. And, you know, if a new song was out, well, did you hear so-and-so's new tune? But it was part of our lives. And it was a part of a, a part of my life in a special sort of way that it's really hard to explain because it personified my life at the time. It personified my rural surroundings. It personified it was music that that related to the life that I lived. I knew what working was. I knew what getting up before the sun did early in the morning, going out and putting the day's work in. I knew all about that. I knew, I knew the joy of nobody appreciated Saturday like a country boy that was born back during my era, because it's the only day we had was Saturday. Sunday was sacred. You maybe played and stuff when you were little, but you know you didn't work on Sunday and. Theaters were closed in the little towns, and I mean, it was just a, it was a sacred day. You went to church at Sunday school, and you know, but the, the country music was about all of that. It was about the sacred Sundays and about the just going out and doing Saturday night, being the Saturday all day. Saturday was a special day in the life of a country boy, and about the you know the 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 joys of the simple things, the the you know the your first kiss or your first first real girlfriend or your first, you know, uh, getting put down by somebody or getting in a fight with somebody or country music talked about all that. There's not a facet of the simple life that people lived when I was younger that was not personified by country music. It was my life personified. It was truly the soundtrack of my life. And, of course, now things have changed, and the music has changed. And, you know, everybody goes to town whatever time of day they want to. They don't keep Sunday. It's, everything's open on Sunday. And, you know, Saturday's not the special day it was. And it, it's not that, that same feeling. It's not that same, same thing. But it was like, I mean, it was everything from, you know, it talked about, like, the silence of a fallen star. I mean, you know what a fallen star is. If you're, if you're a country kid, you've seen it. It's silent. It's beautiful. But it's like it lights up a purple night. And the moon just went behind a cloud to hang its head and cry. 
or comb your hair and paint and powder. You sing loud and I'll sing louder. You be proud and I'll be prouder. Tonight we're setting the woods on fire. Or songs about mama. Or songs about daddy. Or songs about family. Or songs about sitting down and having supper with everybody. Come home to supper time. It's just that. That's kind of lifestyle that I live. That kind of simple lifestyle that I live. Honor, honesty, uh, loyalty, patriotism, belief in God, belief in country, belief in treating people like you want to be treated. It was all country music had it all. It was all written and sung and personified by what country music was and what it meant to me and what it still means to me. What those songs and those days and those experiences will be, will be with me for the rest of my life. And I can draw on them at any time I want to. I can remember the simple life. I can remember how it was. I can remember the songs that were part of it. And that's what country music means to me. And then we got to hear from the voice behind so many iconic 80s and 90s country hits, Marty Rabin of Shenandoah. You know, good country music uh, means means actually a, a great deal to me. It's it's not a living. Uh, it's literally the heart and soul of 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 what what I what I know of a childhood, what I've known of a livelihood. What I've known of a life in general uh, has been, has actually, to the core, has been been genuinely good. It really has. And, you know, you hear a lot of stuff nowadays about folks talking about this bro country. And, look, the first thing I'll tell you is, listen, I, I'm grateful to the Lord that, that we got a shot. We didn't sound like Ernest Tubb when we came out. But thank goodness there was room out there like there's room out there for anybody else to, to let it expand and all that other kind of stuff. The, the great thing that we're finding, because it is country music and it's that family type thing in it, uh, I mean, there's a lot of the acts that are out nowadays that, that, that are wanting us to go out with them, you know, and because they, that, you know, they feel like and, and believe that, that, that what we're doing is is that we're, you know, we're actually kind of like the rebirth and the and the rejuvenation of of '90s country music. So therefore, with that as it is, you know, uh, it's just it, it's something that you find that that, that it's it, that it's always good to come home to, because you never actually ever leave it as as long as you're in it. Because every look, just a few weeks ago, we had the opportunity of coming together on a Wednesday night. Because John Barry was diagnosed with throat cancer. I mean, before it was all over with, uh, it seemed like everybody that was in the business was there at that event that night. Uh, I mean, even before the, you know, Vince shows up, before the night's over, Garth and Tricia shows up. Uh, and, and everybody in the world that you could think of was there that night. And it just made, it just made good for... For the heart of, of again, what what I believe that, that that I've grown up with, that I've known about country people, that I've known about country people, not just the artist, but the country people that that, that I've known as being country people, and I, I love it. Uh, it. To me, it's 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 literally been the heart of of uh, heart and soul of, of 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 the United States. And we had such a great time talking to our friend Barbara Fairchild. Well, well, a lot to say, and and I think just like the the testimony of the people's lives in these shows, uh, because and and like we were talking even after the show about the impact that that people's music has on in everyday life for folks, because. You know, a lot of times people don't know, they, they've been hurt. I mean, it's hard to get through this world without getting hurt in some ways. And I know, and, and as, as a Christian, and we, my husband and I, we do a lot of ministry, do a lot of counseling and praying with people. And there's a lot of people that are closed up, you know, 
sometimes they grew up in a real abusive home or, you know, told to sit down and shut up, keep your mouth shut or whatever. And then there's a lot of emotions and hurt sometimes that's, that's in there that they don't know how to express it, don't know what to do with that. And sometimes just the song can turn that. And, and I mean, just like in, in Merle's case, you know, and, and Johnny, all the stuff that Johnny went through, I mean, and people sometimes, they get ensnared by drugs and alcohol and things like that. And, you know, they, they always promise, the drug dealer always promises how good this is going to be, but yet it's a snare, it's, it's a pit. Right. You know, but, you know, June loved Johnny enough. I mean, she drew the line and held him to it, and eventually some sanity came into play when they, they said, one way or the other, we're going to stop you, and he said, okay. And and so those music can do things like open a person's heart or their spirit to other things. And it can be for good or bad. Right, but, absolutely. But that's country music, I think, is rich with those kind of values, hope, and and things that opens the hearts of people. That's why I love country music. And who could forget 80s country hit maker Sylvia? Country music for me is, there is a, in the roots of country music, there's a genuine, authentic desire to tell a story and to connect with people in, in a way that says, haven't you felt like this too? That's the core, it's, it's relational. And I'm drawn to music that tells a story and that paints a picture. And that's what I like to write. I like when I sing a song to see it unfolding as I sing it. And that's, to me, that's what country music at its best does so well. And we got to wrap it all up with a guy who's taken the influence from all of these legends and icons and putting his own spin on it, taking it into the future. Arkansas's own Heath Sanders. Country music is an interpretation of our lives. For those of us who don't know how to say what our lives mean to ourselves and how we live and what that means to us, we're lucky enough to have people in Nashville and all over the United States writing country songs that tells exactly what we want to say. That's what it is to me. So I want to hear from you. What does country music mean to you? Next week on Facebook, you'll be able to have an opportunity to win a really great prize. We've got an autographed country music poster. This thing was signed by some of the guests that you've heard on Country Fried and seen on Talking Country. People like Daryl Scott, Barbara Fairchild, Sylvia, Heath Sanders, Roy Cash Jr., and more. All you have to do is find the post on Facebook starting next week and just tell us what country music means to you. We'll pick a winner at random and let you know that you've won the poster. You can find contest rules and more information at AETN.org. And I guess that brings us to the end of our journey. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for joining me each week to share our love of this great art form. It's been my honor to bring this show to you. But even though this show is coming to an end, don't think for a minute that it's the last time you'll hear me talking about country music. Remember this, where one journey ends, another always begins. And whatever that happens to be, I hope I see you there. Just like we've talked about today, country music means a whole lot to me. I've been talking about and playing country music my whole life, and that will never change. I was born a country singer, and I'll die a country singer. I knew that was part of what I was destined to do ever since I was a little kid, riding around with my grandpa as we drove across his farm just outside of Bluffton, listening to George Jones tapes, I knew from a young age that there was something special about this music. Even at four years old, it spoke to me like nothing else ever had. It helped me understand life a lot better, and it's shown me through 24 years of being a country music fan and 10 years of being a country music artist that regardless of your background or your current circumstances, you're never alone. Because no matter what you're going through, there's a country song for that, and it'll always be there for you, just like an old friend. You know, I was trying to think of the right words to say to finish this whole thing off. 
And I thought about Johnny Carson and his last words as he signed off for the last time. He simply said, I bid you a very heartfelt good night. But that just didn't seem right. And then it finally came to me. There ain't but one way to finish this, and that's how we started it. Country. So in the words of Roy Rogers, happy trails to you until we meet again.